Perik Yesh Nochlin, Dav Kuf Chav, sponsored the Rufu Shlema for Rus Bas Bela. The daughters of Tzlavchad were permitted to marry out of their tribe. The Gemara describes them as righteous because they heeded the advice of Moshe not to marry out of their tribe. The youngest did not marry before the age of 40. A question, how can this be a sign of righteousness? Rav Chizda states, a woman who married after 40 cannot bear children, resulting in no man wanting to marry them. The answer, they prayed Hashem would perform a miracle and reward for their righteousness, as he did to Yocheved, who gave birth to Moshe at a ripe old age of 130. The proof. Vayelech ish mi beis levi, vayikach is bas levi. The Torah refers to Amram's wife, Yocheved, as a child, bas levi rather than a woman. She was a 70th born to Yaakov, conceived on the way and born in Egypt to explain the verse that states, Yaakov came down to Mitzrayim with 70 family members, whereas a count produces only 69. She was referred to as a bas because her skin softened and her wrinkles smoothed out. Although at the Brisbane Absorium, Hashem told Abram, the Jewish nation would be enslaved for 400 years, cal- calculating the age of Kahas, one descendant to Egypt at 133, Amram, his son, 137, and Moshe, 80, amounts to 350 without considering any overlap. Therefore, Chazal determined the calculation began from the birth of Yitzchak, who was 60 when Yaakov was born, who descended to Egypt at the age of 130, decreasing the years of Shibud by 190. 210 remaining. Subtract 80 of Moshe, at the time of the Exodus, which leaves 130 years, Yocheved's age when she bore him. Her miraculous return to youth caused Amram to return her as if marrying her for the first time, as the verse states, Vayikach, as opposed to Vayachzor. The Gemara derives a principle from the fact that the daughters of Tzlavchad were listed in the Torah both chronologically and according to their level of wisdom. An exceptionally old sage, even if not the wiser than a younger sage, should be seated at the head of a banquet table. One who is young and exceptionally wise should be seated at the head of a yeshiva over one older but not as wise. The Academy of Rabbi Yishmoel held the daughters were equal, as the Torah states, Vatiena. Listing them in various orders emphasizes this. The Gemara presents two contradictory verses. Letov be'neim tiev l'nashim, teaching the Benot Tzlavchad were permitted to marry out of their tribe. They were considered tzidkanios for heeding Moshe's advice to marry within their tribe. However, another verse states, v'chol bas yoreshes nachlo le'echod mishpachas mate avia tiel isha. Apparently, at least for the generation of the desert, those women who inherited were required to marry into their tribe. The answer, the daughters of Tzulavchud were granted a special dispensation. A question, how do we know to limit this requirement to the generation of the desert? How does the Gemara distinguish it from Shchutei Chutz Hafaris Nidorim, slaughtering outside the temple confines and annulling vows. The answer, the term zehadavar, a limiting term, is used in the Torah in reference to three subjects, nachla, inheritance, shchutechut, slaughtering outside temple confines, hafaris nadarim, annulling vows. Number one, in reference to other daughters inheriting, not those of Sulevchad, the term zehadavar indicates a limitation, a prohibition for the present, not for the future. Number two, the Torah uses the term Lidorosam for generations, in addition to Zadavar in reference to Shkutei Chutz. The term Zadavar used in reference to slaughtering outside the temple confines, compares it to Hafaris Nadorim, teaching 
According to Beis Hillel, vows of consecrated items can be annulled. According to Beis Shammai, to exempt the Kohen from Kares doing Malika outside the temple confines, it states Zehadavar only in respect to Shechutei Chutz, not Malika. The comparison from Shechutei Chutz to Aforas Nidarim teaches they can be annulled by three regular judges, as stated there, Aaron Uvana Vecho Yisrael, or one expert, as indicated by the term Roshe Amatos. Number three, by way of a comparison of the term Zehadavar between Shechutei Chutz and Aforas Nidarim, the law of annulling vows applies for generations. The comparison cannot be applied to the laws of inheritance. If it was not limited to the generation of the desert, the verse should have left out Zehadavar, limiting it. If you're enjoying Daphne 5, please click on the link below, subscribe, and become a sponsor. Thank you.